we're gonna talk about shiny uh with their comeback album don't call me the seventh album um shiny is an interesting k-pop group um interesting because i think you know they they formed 2008 had a lot of success and then the last couple of years have had some really challenging times um 2017 jong hyun one of their members uh died of an apparent suicide um you know the the group decided to stay together and and, uh just kind of stay as the four of them now um 2018 uh they released another album but then they kind of had to go on a bit of a hiatus because uh, i believe one or two of the members had to fulfill their military obligation yeah three of the four finished their military service last year yeah so so it's it's been an interesting up and down couple of years um but you know, finally they're they're back with this new album. Don't call me and Dave. What are your What do you think? Is this album a good comeback album? I did like the album, yes. Um, and you see, you see online today, there's a lot of hype and anticipation for Shiny's back. Uh, you know, that's the thing on some of their other tracks when they make comebacks for Shiny's back, right? But Shiny being back now is a big deal because again, first time since. Uh, uh, Jungyun died right for and like the 2018 album was the last time he, any of his vocals were on music so this is the first time it's like new just the just the four members that remain and you know that, that, that's a pretty long wait for active k-pop act you cite the military service you know k-pop members having their military service and doing like a second contract with their labels uh that that's no sure thing in the history of k-pop music right and mm-hmm. um i think it, it would have been pretty easy to see like shiny dying off because uh Taman, who did not do his military service yet is like incredibly active still he just had a solo album come out last year and he was part of super m which is the sm entertainment you know, k-pop super group of which he's one of the members so i wouldn't have been surprised to see like the sh- the shiny group fade away and tame and just do super m stuff and solo stuff right because you, you said t- it came out in 2008 13 years there, there there's there's very little track record for a k-pop group sticking around in, mm-hmm. in full for that long a time like again like they're they're a second generation k-pop act debuted in the 2000s yeah. right like <laughs> there's very few left that uh are e- even like peers for them right like everything else that we talk about now like acts that are marketed to the west bts blackpink like uh even xo nct those are clearly 2010s acts so shiny is a bit of a relic in that regard um and i i I like listening to this album because uh from what i gathered i'm I'm relatively new to the group i I really became aware of them from taman being in super m the past two years um hearing hearing i think like the, the the trademark uh shiny sound which is a lot more r&b focused than a lot of the other uh k-pop i've been listening to lately it was pretty cool but i was surprised with just about how, how much uh, range there was on this 30 minute album so I, I liked it quite a bit yeah i agree i it for being a short album and you know shout out to short albums um i i really thought it was like banger after banger especially for the first half probably um i think near the you know last couple of tracks i started to kind of lose a little bit of interest um and i find that with myself with k-pop uh albums a lot only because i think the the like k-pop nature where it's like this like pop edm sound sometimes Mm -hmm. just ends up uh falling in the same the sameness category to me but i really thought like the first track don't call me uh marry you code kiss kiss like i was like all right like we we got some variation on here but it's all really hitting right now which tracks were standing out to you yeah i definitely like don't call me the title track Uh, music video came out today for that from what i gathered that's new for them because hip-hop uh has not been like much to their music to this point that's clearly a hip-hop influence k-pop track um i think it's really good the video is pretty cool too um Taman is is quite a good dancer. If you check those videos out, you'd see that. Um, I also thought body rhythm was really catchy, um, and just like little production choices. Like I think the the bass line and attention is really good. Um, the vocoder, like vocal effects on kind at the very end, like really really cool. Um, and I really want you. Like I think the the chorus is really catchy there. 
Um, you said marry me, definitely more classic for them, R and B focused thing, but the harmonizing is like really impressive on that one. Yeah. So I, I think there's a lot of, lot of tracks worth revisiting. Yeah. Mary, you kind of reminded me of uh talk by Khalid a little bit with like mm. the way the, the beat sure. was structured. Um, I liked code a lot. That just seems like a very like K-pop style banger, but like uh, just uh, right around the chorus, like the way that the, and everything just is kind of like blaring, I thought was really cool. Um, yeah. And then kiss kiss is a little bit more toned back, but uh, I, I, I just, for those types of like lo-fi or I don't even know if it's lo-fi, but like R and B popish sounds that, that you find on some of these K-pop albums. I really thought this one stood out. It was really sweet. So um, yeah, a really impressive comeback, I think. And um, uh, hopefully they're uh, a group that sticks around the elder statesman of K-pop, it seems. Yeah, no, I agree. And I said it before, but they really haven't targeted the West uh, throughout their career. I mean, they've made both Korean and Japanese albums and have found success in both countries. But I'm so I, I'm just going to be ch- checking to see if there's a change in their strategy over at SM, if they want Shiny to be big in the U.S. Are they even going to bother? Like, I feel like the inception of K-pop groups, like if a group is just founded, they'll kind of like announce the label, like we are targeting the West with these with these guys, these girls, right? So I like shiny because because they're OGs as far as the genre is concerned. Like, you know, like what what do they want to do? Who knows, right? Because Super M definitely targeted for the West, right? Um, and like I I just just looking at how SM Entertainment operates. You know, we haven't really talked about them before. You know, YG is Blackpink, big hit, who's relatively nascent is obviously BTS. But SM, they're like the universal music group when it comes to K-pop. They have like everybody else exo mm-hmm. nct wavy red velvet girls generation loaded loaded mm-hmm. label and the fact that they could pull off something like super m is really cool like what other music label would ever try and like make a brand new pop group because they have so many other pop acts to take talent from right like it's mm-hmm. a really cool idea um so yeah i i just i want to see what's next for shiny and and sm in the in the west well, uh, definitely check out Don't Call Me, the seventh album from Shiny.